Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of News You Can Use, and we have a lot to talk to you about, including people falling out of love with the AstraZeneca vaccine. One province is moving away from it, we'll tell you which one that is. Plus, we got to tell you about a York professor who's at risk of losing his job because he spoke out about anti-black racism. Also, thousands, or maybe I'm over-exaggerating, but a lot of big celebrities are speaking out against what is happening in the Middle East. If you don't know about it, we're going to break it down for you. And we have a good news story about this little kid who is doing the most, but rightfully so, right? All right, before we get into all of that, you have some homework you need to do, so make sure that you subscribe to this channel, tap that notification bell, and follow us on all of our social media. And by the way, if you haven't watched our one-on-one -on -one exclusive with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, you are missing out because it was... Huge. Oh, wow. huge. 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 <laughs> like, we're going to big up ourselves. It was massive. And the numbers are massive, so we're happy. All right, let's get into it. So, remember that province I was telling you about that is falling out of love with the AstraZeneca vaccine? Well, that's Alberta. And basically, they announced that they are going to stop using that particular vaccine. So, you're probably wondering, why are they doing this? Is this because of those rare concerns about blood clots that have been reported in, with this particular vaccine? Well, no. Apparently, the Alberta Health sp uh, spokesperson, his name is Tom McMillan, he went on to say this, take a look at your screen. Based on the fact that we are receiving no known future shipments of AstraZeneca at this time, but we are receiving large quantities of other mRNA vaccines such as Pfizer and Moderna. So Eva, I know you've been following this story. I know Alberta is the first province to do this in this country. So what is their vaccine rollout looking like in terms of the numbers? So Alberta has administered approximately 255,000 first doses of AstraZeneca and 2,200 second doses. Mm -hmm. The remaining supply of about 8,400 doses will be used as second doses for everyone else. However, for other vaccines, they're expecting more than 236,000 doses of the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines arriving this week alone. Wow. So that's a lot of Moderna and Pfizer. But if we think about that mm -hmm. and those numbers, like using leftover first doses as second doses, like I don't think people really understand like why there are two doses. Like, is it the same vaccine you just get twice? Is it two different vaccines that kind of work together to make sure that you're immune or that your transmissibility is not the same. Mm -hmm. Like what is the purpose? Because if you're just saying, oh, we're just gonna take first doses and make them second doses, like what does that mean? It's such a good question because there's a lot of anxiety ar already out there for people yeah. who have taken the AstraZeneca. We've heard reports from people in Alberta who said that if they knew that this decision was coming, that they might have, they were gonna wait. They would have preferred to wait for the Pfizer and Moderna vaccine. Exactly. So it's quite interesting. And we also know that, you know, Alberta right now is the hotspot across North America. They have the highest per capita cases of COVID-19. Let us know what you think about this in the comment section right now. All right, listen to this story. A York professor is literally at risk of losing his job after speaking out about anti-black racism. And so far, there's been a petition that has garnered thousands of signatures in support of him. So we're going to break it down for you. And basically, this professor's name is Dr. Amy Avalanto. And his complaints about anti-black racism at York University, they date back all the way to 2017. But here's the thing. They didn't surface. They didn't come to light to the public until February of this year after a CBC documentary aired. Take a look at this clip. The uh, talk for 18 minutes where I explain what that means to be black. What experiencing racism means in our flesh. So Eva, I mean, this is a big story. And all transparency, I went to York University. So what are some of the details of these complaints? So he complains of racist behavior of two white York University administrators. Mm -hmm. He has endured racist mobbing, a vicious smear campaign, hacking and surveillance of his email, and a multitude of false allegations against him. The experience has harmed his mental health and has driven him to attempt suicide more than once. So I'm shocked we haven't heard more about this. Yeah, no, it's a big story. It is. And I can tell you that you're probably wondering, has York University said anything? Well, listen to this quote. Look at this. They say this. There's an ongoing investigation into complaints that engage both litigation and employment matters. We are not able to discuss the details. But have they implemented any action, Eva? 
Um, so they said that they have gotten um, a new black racism framework and mm. action plan designed to help combat racism on and off campus. But this is coming out when a lot of people are looking at them for mm -hmm. it. So it was kind of expected. Yeah, and back to that petition, by the way, it has garnered more than 42,000 signatures. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with this story. I would love to know, though, for you guys watching, like, do you think universities or like, you know, education places, should they be implementing other measures, things to make, you know, campus more safe for students of color, professors of color? Let us know your thoughts right now in the comment section. Okay, this next story is a big one. You've probably seen some of your biggest celebrities tweeting about it or maybe posting images on Instagram. Well, basically, world politicians and celebrities, they are speaking out after the removal of Palestinian families in a neighborhood in East Jerusalem. And right now, tensions are running high. Eva, I know we've been working on this story. Break down the facts for us. Okay, so the neighborhood is called Sheikh Jarrah, and it's in occupied East Jerusalem. So under international law, Sheikh Jarrah legally belongs to Palestinian territories. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about Palestinians and Palestinian homes on Palestinian land being forcefully removed from their homes. Now this started in October 2020 when Israeli court ruled that six Palestinian families in Sheikh Jarrah have to leave their homes this May and then seven in August. Appeals have been submitted to the Supreme Courts of Israel to legally fight this against the forced eviction. Now what's happening right now? Thousands of Palestinians are protesting in the streets of Sheikh Jarrah to try to protect these families. Police have gotten involved and arrests the, arrested the protesters. They're protesting the removal of thousands of Palestinians from strategic areas in East Jerusalem. So this surrounds Jerusalem's old city, mm. and these houses are strategically placed to be surrounded around them. Okay. And we've, we've heard from the United Nations, they actually released this statement. I want you to take a look at your screen because this is what it says. We wish to emphasize that East Jerusalem remains part of the occupied Palestinian territory in which international humanitarian law applies. The occupying power cannot confiscate private property in occupied territory. Now, we are talking about families here, so Eva, I want to know, how many children are impacted in this? So according to UNICEF, UNICEF, on May 9th, over the past two days, 29 Palestinian children were injured in East Jerusalem, including in the Old City and Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood. Eight Palestinian children were meanwhile arrested, and a one-year-old toddler was among those injured. Some children were taken for treatment at hospitals with injuries in their head and their spine. This comes amid reports that nearly 300 people were injured in this area. Now this is coming straight from UNICEF, and this is from May 9th, so it is growing and the numbers are growing rapidly. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of people are speaking out about, of the, against the violence, including Canada's NDP leader, Jagmeet Singh. We've also seen prominent uh, celebrities like The Weeknd, Michael B. Jordan, and Dua Lipa adding into this conversation. How are you guys feeling about this story? Let us know, because of course we know it is one that does drive up a lot of emotions. Let us know how you're feeling in the comment section. In the meantime, though, we're going to take a breather here. Maybe bring up some good news. Kelly, do we need some good news? We do, we do. We do. No <laughs> crying today, no tears. I do feel bad, but I've got my emotions in check since then, so. Listen, we love emotions here. Whether they're happy or sad, emotions are good. Never be afraid to let out your emotions. Okay, I wanna see how you're feeling about this story because basically there's this four-year-old boy, okay? His name is Noah. By the way, I have a nephew named Noah, so great name for this mom. Oh, Bert says it. All righty, shout out King Noah. Shout out King Noah. So basically, he loves two things, okay? This four-year-old boy, he loves popsicles and SpongeBob. We don't we all? all right? Don't well, we all? Definitely popsicles. SpongeBob. Yeah. Come on, don't <laughs> wait on SpongeBob. It's SpongeBob. <laughs> so as we know, so many kids are at home, virtual learning, as is Noah. He was basically using his mom's, um, you know, iPad, uh, but somehow was able to access her Amazon account, which is also connected to her sister's account. And then she got a call. And then what happened there, Eva? <laughs> so she got a call from her sister asking her, why are there three huge boxes weighing 70 pounds and require immediate freezing at my house? So that's when Jennifer discovered that she was the proud owner of 51 cases of SpongeBob popsicles costing just under, just under, 2,619 US dollars. Yes. And we should put that in Canadian dollars. That's more than 3,000 Canadian. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of popsicles. That's a lot. <laughs> a lot for a four-year-old. So how's she going to pay for all of this? <laughs> so her friend set up a GoFundMe for her, and yeah. within 24 hours, she was able to pay off the ice pops and more. Oh. So you know, she couldn't return that? 
You can, can return not. anything. Because well, now, the four through the life is you can return anything. But you can return those popsicles? Be you honest. can return anything. <laughs> <laughs> you can return anything. Anyhow, good on Noah. You got your popsicles. You gave your mom a small heart attack. She's still alive, thank God. <laughs> and make sure to behave yourself, Noah. All the Noahs out there. Hey, that's your news you can use for this week. Remember, if you have any news stories you want us to look into, email us news at brandingonashow.com. We drop episodes every Tuesday, every Friday, plus the Brandon Gona Show drops on Sundays, and it's always lit. So before we go, remember what you gotta do. Subscribe to this channel, hit that notification bell, and follow us on all of our socials. See you on Friday. Bye.